Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to a Monday morning, a vacation, a scone-cation edition of a Morning Scone. You boy is off this week, so you'll have a fill-in hosts on AFR. Uh, but you, you know what? I've, uh, I've earned a little vacation. I'm excited to take it. Not going anywhere. Staying here uh, in, in BR. But um, uh, next week, I'll be in Atlanta for SEC Football Media Day. So I always say, like, that's the unofficial... A start of football season. So, <clears throat> uh, whenever you got SEC football media days, you got a week of SEC football media days, then the Saints report for camp, then LSU reports for camp, and then you're in it. So, um, get 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 through this week. Uh, Terrio is going to host today uh, with Hannah Griff. So, I know they got a lot of good guests planned for the show today on AFR. Um, uh, Ryan Clark, they're going to do like a traction show. So Ryan Clark's going to come on. Mac, who's the founder CEO of Traction, is going to come on as well. Um, I think they're going to get um, the the head trainer for the New Orleans Saints. It's going to be a real good show. Um, so look forward to that. Hey, my pops is watching. What's up, pops? Val, good morning. Cole, good morning. Uh, Hal, Craig, good morning. Thank you all all for the little blue thumbs up. That's really uh, that the uh, that. That certainly helps all the impressions on the video, but uh, it's, it's good to see as well. Did you like the thumbs up? So, uh, uh, Cole, right after the shoot, said, "How's Drew this morning?" Uh, Drew's still sleeping. It's a Christmas miracle. It's a vacation. It's a sconecation miracle. Uh, Drew normally has me up about set, about six thirty in the morning, if not earlier. Um, but uh, he's still so it's seven thirty nine for Drew still to be sleeping. That's kind of amazing. So I am going to be listening though to see if I if I hear him. Sounds like he's still sleeping. Tony Lightfoot, good morning. Tony from Dutchtown. Mark, good morning. Uh, Adam, good morning. Good to see you. Uh, Mark asked a question about uh, the Pelicans signing Isaiah Thomas. I wouldn't mind the Pel- the Pelicans pursuing Isaiah Thomas uh, for the same kind of deal um, that uh, that Boogie got in um, in Golden State. Uh, Look at Tony Lightfoot watching from Paris. Oh, we oui, Pally. Uh, Dutchtown goes to Paris. Enjoy, dude. Uh, Stephen, good morning. James Dean, good morning. Aunt Mary, good morning. Um, I would be all for Isaiah Thomas. I think Isaiah Thomas is at a point, this year, has gotten to a point where, you know, he goes to Cleveland, then to L.A. Um, there, are quite, there seem to be lingering questions about him now. Uh, if he has to... If he's looking for like a prove it year, he's got opportunity in New Orleans. Um, whereas you know, Boogie maybe just needs to get healthy. Uh, Isaiah Thomas needs to get on the floor and play really well. He'd have an opportunity to do that in New Orleans, um, and he wouldn't have to be the star player, obviously, with AD there. So, I I, I know for, there are reasons why people would not endorse Isaiah Thomas to uh, to the Pelicans, but I I mean at this point, I think you need star power. You certainly need. Guys that can take the scoring load off of AD in a given night, and Thomas would certainly do that, so I'd be all for it. Um, all right, let's see. Um, let's see. When you get around to it, what's your take on Harper making the all-star roster with the league-leading ERA pitchers? No, I was surprised to see Snell not make it, but I'm not surprised altogether. Like, man, it, which is actually where I want to start, because Aaron... Uh, uh, Aaron Nola and Alex Bregman were named uh, All Stars. Uh, we talked about it a couple of days ago. In no way is this a surprise. Both were, were Aaron Nola was a lock to make it, um, and, and he did as a starting pitcher. So that's 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 great news and certainly well deserved. Uh, he's the Phillies ace. He's eleven and two, two four one ERA. The uh, you know one hundred sixteen strikeouts and one hundred sixteen innings. The thing about um, about Nola is, and it, you're starting to see it kind of kind of come to pass uh when and I said this when Aaron Nola graduated or when he left LSU he didn't graduate obviously but um when he left LSU I said Aaron Nola is the best collegiate pitcher LSU's ever had and that ruffled a lot of feathers because people looked at Ben McDonald and they looked at Kevin Gosman who's drafted drafted top five and they looked at a lot of guys who went on to have really good pro careers uh guys like Paul Bird and Chad Ogier and so they were looking with the benefit of hindsight. But if you just look in a vacuum at their collegiate careers, Aaron Nola had the best, he was the best collegiate pitcher that LSU's ever had. Uh, when you look at the fact that he was a, star, a weekend rotation guy for three years, he was the national pitcher of the year in 2014. 
He's the only pitcher in the history of the SEC to win SEC Pitcher of the Year twice. Uh, his, hang on, I pulled this up just a bit ago. His, his ERA, he was 30 and six in three years. 30 and six. His ERA was 2.09. His career ERA, so that includes like freshman Nola going to pitch against SEC hitters. His career ERA was 2.09. In 332 innings, 332, he had 345 strikeouts and 42 walks. He was masterful. And people, I think sometimes, you know, as time passes, we, we forget just how incredible he was to watch. And I always try to remember people, man, or remind people. Whenever you get to see guys like this, you're going through it with Cabrera right now. It's the same with Bregman. I'll talk about it in a second. Like, understand how special it is to get to see guys like this play collegiate baseball when you get to watch them. Like Aaron Nola, it, you got to watch an all-star, a major league all-star pitcher for three years at LSU. With Bregman, you got to watch a major league all-star infielder for three years. And you're doing the same right now with Daniel Cabrera because he's a freak show talent. And he's like He's in this class. So... Uh, maybe not there yet, but you forget like he's just a freshman and he's going he's just going to get better over the next two years and you're seeing it right now with Team USA. So yeah, man, so happy for those guys. Uh, Bregman did not get in as a starter; he got in uh, as a reserve, uh, but that's uh, not in any way a tremendous surprise. But he's been awesome this year. Uh, tweeted yesterday, he fulfilled a lifelong dream, which is great to see. Um, so congrats to both of those guys, and it, you know it is kind of amazing because um, you would think with LSU baseball and the history of LSU baseball that there would have been more than than 10 Major League All-Stars. And now there's 12 with Nolan Bregman, but it goes to show you how rare it is. So you had Connie Ryan with the Boston Braves in 1944. He was the first. Then Alvin Dark, Joe Bill Adcock. And after that in 1960, you went all the way to 1993 with Albert Bell. Now Bell made it in 93, 94, 95, 96, and 97. So he made it every year from 93 to 97. Uh, the Paul Bird made one in 99. Uh, Brian Wilson made three in 2008, 10, and 11. Uh, the only time you've had, uh, before this year, that you had two in the same year was Brad Hopp and Aaron Hill. We talked about that before. That was 2009. Um, LeMay Hughes made two, uh, 2015 and 2017. Will Harris, of course, made it in 16, and now Nola and Bregman, that's it. I mean, the history of LSU baseball, we've had 12 guys go on to be Major League Baseball All-Stars, if you include Nola and Bregman. So, uh, rarefied air, very happy for both those guys, and of course, uh, I'd love to give a big Calakai uh, to Aaron Nola. I'm just not going to yell too loud because um, you know, Drew's still sleeping. I'm trying not to wake him up. Um, so, congrats to those guys. We'll get some questions here in a second. There's one more thing I want to talk about. Let's see. Uh, Justin, good morning. Charles, good morning. Dale, good morning. Um, Val says the Boudreaux's Bloody Mary mix was awesome. Had a couple converts from Tabasco. I love hearing that. So this is the Bloody Mary mix. Um, I've told you it before. And, and look, I'm candid, y'all. Like, I don't do Bloody Marys. I'd love to tell you I've had this and could could rave about it. I can't. I love this. I've had the, the margarita mix, which is terrific. So I've asked y'all if you get this to try it and let me know. But... Um, Boudreaux's Bloody Mary Mix. You can find it in Baton Rouge at Calandro's, Calvin's, Alexander's, and uh, Mid-City Wine and Craft. And then uh, in Homa at Canada's. You can find it there. And um, if you can't find it where you shop, then tell the people where you shop that they need to carry it. Because it's a great local product and love supporting local companies. And Boudreaux's is certainly in that uh, mix. See what I did? Pun. I love puns. Okay, let's see if we get to a couple. Oh, the other thing. Uh, Craig asked, are the USA Baseball games on TV? They're streaming. You go to usabaseball.com and they stream video. So, excuse me. Um, uh, you, uh, collegiate national team coached by Paul Maneri. Um, of course, the three LSU guys on the team. Uh, they beat Japan yesterday. Big rally. None of the LSU guys had really a statistically great game to speak of. But um, it's the... Uh, uh, the, so it was a best of five. So the U.S. lost the first game against Japan. They've won the next three. So, of course, they've won the series. Now their game on Saturday got rained out. So this is a cool thing. They get to play today in Atlanta at SunTrust Park. Now it's only open to scouts. So if you live in the Atlanta area, sorry. But um, it does go to show you also um, how valuable games like or series like this are for, like for the scouting world and for the future of baseball. But... Um, 
it, it is cool for those guys to get to go play in a major league park. So I guess the Braves are off it. But you know what else it, it suggests is the reason they're not open to the public is the Braves would have to staff the game. Like you'd have to put ticket takers or you know, concession workers and security and all that stuff. And I guess if you just open it up to some scouts and say, you know, bring in some peanuts and a, and a bottle of water, you know. You don't, have to, you don't have to worry about staffing. It's basically just like you know, the Braves, if the Braves were holding practice there. So, anyway. But uh, here's hoping that Team USA can pull it out today uh, against Japan as they play in Atlanta. And then they'll go to Cuba for a series against the Cuban uh, national team. So, that'd be a lot of fun for those guys. For Hess, Watson, and Cabrera. And then Duplantis, who's been injured. but And, of course, Palmineri also. So, um, really cool for all them. Let's see. Uh, get some of y'all's comments and questions. That's that's what I had this morning. Oh, a quick reminder as well. I know that's going on right now, but uh, if you live in the New Orleans area, today Jordy and T-Bob started in syndication on ESPN New Orleans. So if you're about to get in the car, um, or make sure you make sure you make a habit of it. Um, you know, get the, uh, you know, get the, uh, set a button if you haven't already for 100.3 ESPN New Orleans. And now there's a new appointment on your way to work every morning. 7 to 9 a.m. with Jordy and T-Bob off the bench on 100.3 ESPN New Orleans. Uh, Justin Robinson, good morning. Tim Henderson, good morning. Cole says, without a doubt, Noel was special at LSU. Glad I got to see him pitch. Um, his last game at the box during the postseason. Same with Bregman. Yeah, they were awesome, man. They were so fun to watch. Gabriel, good morning. Zach, good morning. Darren, good morning. Um, Pete, good morning. Let's see if y'all got some questions. Fire away. Anything else you want to talk about? Otherwise, we can wrap this up. Mark says, hey, from Southern California. So how about that? we got Tony watching in Paris, and we've got Mark watching in Southern California. Technology is an awesome thing, man. Uh, Jeremy Davis, good morning. Matt Lusto, is your demo big enough in the Houston to do any events out there? Um, I'm never opposed to doing anything like that. Uh, hey, Uncle Mike, good morning. Um, this is like a family affair in here. Love seeing all y'all in here in the morning. Um so, our so short answer to your question, Matt, is yes. Our biggest, um, outside of the state of Louisiana, really outside of Baton Rouge, New Orleans, if you look at our online heat map, like our digital footprint, uh, Houston is by a mile the, the biggest you know, blotch on the heat map where people listen or watch. So, so, yeah, I mean, just by, it's just natural, right? You've got a lot of LSU Grads or Louisiana people that moved to Houston for for work after school or whatever the case may be. So, so the answer to your question is yes, uh, yes, um, and that's also a, in part why like the biggest LSU alumni base outside of Baton Rouge is Houston. Um, so the answer is yes. The um, it's why the Tiger Tour does a stop in Houston every year. A few years back, when uh, Panamski was on, I think he might when he was still on Sports Today. Uh, they did a bus trip with listeners to the St. Arnold Brewery and like an Astros game uh, in the Houston area. So yeah, if you, if you got the if you got any ideas, man, uh, Matt, f- shoot fire away um, for something that you think might might be interesting because we could certainly get together with the the Houston LSU alumni chapter and put you know put something together. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Mindy who just jumped on here and is watching now is an LSU a friend, LSU alum, and lives in the Houston area now also. So y'all are out there. Uh, Mario, good morning, Val. Who's else you taking media days? Uh, they have not announced it yet. Um, if I had to guess, Devin White's going to go. That would seem like a no-brainer. Um, that's an interesting question. Um, and I think this year every team's only taken two. So my guess is they'll bring an offensive. I need to go back and, re- and refresh my memory on that. But it's it's been three in the past. For some reason, I'm thinking they're only taking two this year. Um, and so they would probably take an offensive guy. I don't think it's going to be one of the quarterbacks, although I'd love to be Joe Burrow, uh, but it won't be. Um, probably one of the offensive linemen, maybe Garrett Brumfield, you know, if they just went safe with it. That's pro- or Foster Morrow. That's probably what they would do, quite honestly. They probably... They, <laughs> I mean, if they're really just trying to go, you know, low-key, they'd probably go Devin White, Foster Morrow. Um You know, I'm trying to think of who else would go, but it's it, but it does speak to the fact that it's one of those years for LSU. You know, um, you could throw out Greedy, but if they're going to go def- a defensive guy, they'd go Devin White over Greedy, I think. Um, 
Adam, listening from Dutchtown to Port Allen. <laughs> I appreciate it, Adam. Thank you, man. Um, Darren, what's up with the possible preferred walk-on quarterback, the minor league baseball player turned college? Do we need another? All right, so um, he's talking about Cord Sandberg. We might have talked about this last week. I don't remember. I know we talked about it on AFR. So Cord Sandberg was a Mississippi State signee in the class of 2013. Um, was drafted uh, in the third round, decided to sign a pro contract for about 700K. Went and played pro baseball. He's done that for four years. Never made it past double A. So he's quitting baseball. He wants to go play college football again. I think he's 23 or 24 years old. Um, LSU offered him a preferred walk-on spot. But then again, so did Florida, which of course is where Dan Mullen coaches. And he committed to Mullen at Mississippi State. And then Auburn's offered him a scholarship. He was a four-star, big-time prospect. So um, not knowing anything about it, just outside looking in, it doesn't make a lot of sense for Sandberg, like the connect the dots, for Sandberg to end up in Baton Rouge. I mean, he's got a scholarship offer from Auburn, and then the coach that he signed with out of out of high school originally is at Florida, and he's offered him as a walk-on. So um, as far as does LSU need another, absolutely. I mean, it, like my feeling on it, just this day and age in college football, you should sign it. You should sign at least one quarterback in every class. Like you should never have a class go without signing a quarterback, which LSU did last year, which is a big mistake in my in my book. You should never go without signing a quarterback, and where you have the opportunity to add depth, you absolutely do it, especially if it can be like veteran depth, uh, because you just you never know where someone turns an ankle, or if a prospect doesn't work out, or if a kid transfers. I mean, look at LSU's most successful starting quarterbacks of the last decade. They're Transfers. I mean, with Mettenberger, with Etling, and I mean Burrow. I'm assuming that was going to win this job. It, yeah, it's just it's just the way it's going. So I don't know that I don't I don't have any information there. I don't, but there's no reason to believe that they would get Cord Sandberg. Um, not saying they can't or won't. Um, sorry, there heard Drew. I'm listening for Drew because he's probably waking up soon. Uh, um. But, uh, but, yeah, we'll let you know for sure. As that, We'll follow that for sure. Uh, Tim's watching from Dallas. Thank you. Um, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, God, I can't. I'm so glad I almost, I almost forgot this. Um, okay. Uh, Cole's asking about the Pels for Mello. I would not do that at all. Um, okay, Lee Sieno, good morning. Okay, do y'all remember a couple of weeks ago when... John Peterson came on AFR, and we, I think we might have talked about it on Morning Stone too. He was basically playing for his career. So John Peterson, former All-American golfer at LSU, won a national championship, uh, had a top five finish at the U.S. Open, you know, a few years into, I'm going to say it was 2014 maybe. Um, anyway, uh, he basically, he gave an interview to um, to SI where he said, look, I'm, you know, if I don't make enough money to to keep my tour card that I'm going to retire from golf and his father-in-law owns like an industrial real estate company or commercial real estate company in the Dallas area and he can go be sort of like you know golf with clients and all that. anyway and John so he came on AFR and he was very at peace with it. he said look I'm, I'm going to go play really hard I just haven't loved professional golf and I'm trying to see if I can um, if I can maintain my, my tour card so John Peterson needed to make sixty thousand dollars. This this weekend at the Greenbrier was going to be his final was the final event that he had uh, status for, or you know was exempt for. Uh, he needed sixty thousand dollars to maintain like partial qualification, and he needed something like I forget the exact number, hundred grand, whatever for status, or maybe two hundred something like that for like all of next year. He finished in a tie for 13th, made 121 k So I'm like, hell yeah, man. Dude went out there and he did it, right? He's, well, not exactly. So John, I need to pull this up. I can't believe I forgot. Like I knew going to bed last night, this is something I wanted to talk about today. And I cannot believe I forgot to, to, to have it pulled up. So just bear with me. So this this is what happened. Um, John Peterson tweeted uh, last night. Here it is. It's been a fun ride, PGA Tour. He tweeted, I was wrong. 
I thought I needed 60K for conditional status for the rest of the year on tour. Turns out for this week, I needed 55.33 points to play in the 126 to 150 category for the rest of the season. I earned 54.75 points this week per the 2015 FedEx Cup breakdown. I'm 0.58 of a FedEx Cup point short. The system is brutal and aggravating. Maybe there's an error in there. I appreciate everyone's support. So essentially, John Peterson went in thinking he needed to make $60,000. He doubled that. But because of some screwy deal with the FedEx Cup point system, he actually does not did not make it by less than a point by point fit by 58th of a by 58th of a point I, I don't know I don't know what he's going to do he said like you know maybe there's an error maybe they can recount I don't know if if in playing so well this weekend it makes him rethink but I, I just I've been fascinated by that story um just for a, a young guy to put his entire professional athletic career on Drew's awake on the line um, in one event. Anyway, let me go get him up. I'm going to get out of here. Y'all have a great day. Boudreaux's Bloody Mary Mix, the Margarita Mix. Pick it up. Like this, share this, pass it on. Thank y'all so much, and we'll see you tomorrow for Morning Scope.